sick. David, Liz feels sick. Um, well, stop eating that ice cream, Liz. I'll have it, I'll have it. David, what would you do if your dad said you had to be a motor mechanic? I'd leave home. Oh, well, what if you were still at school? Right, ask a teacher, I do. Like a creep. David, being as how you're a teacher, can I ask you something? It wouldn't be about your father wanting you to be a motor mechanic, by any chance. David, I've lost my shoes. Well, sit down, Pat. We'll find it later, all right? Now, what are you good at? I said, what are I you know, good at? I'm thinking. David, she still feels sick. Oh, well, stop eating that popcorn, Liz. It's... All of it, all of it. Photography. <laughs> pictures. I like taking pictures, you know, like the film, only still. Oh. Here, I found a pair of shoes. All of it, all of it. Look, shall I give him the pack? Come on, come on. David. Oh, look, Phil, should we give it a rest for a minute, Phil? We'll have a chat when we get back to school, eh? Get something together with your parents, maybe? OK. David. Oh, oh, well, well, go to the gents. Now, ladies, kiddies. I want to go home! Oh, what a good idea. Come on, let's go. Bugs, you're in charge. If we're not back by the end of the film, get them back to school, OK? Come on, come on. I'll jump in, I'll come in, I'll have it, I'll have it. Well, I'm very pleased the girl got home safely, but leaving a whole class unattended is sheer negligence. Well, they are fourth years, Doris. I mean, surely I can trust them to get back to school safely? Well, obviously you can't. You've managed to lose the whole of 4C. I'm beginning to think your unorthodoxy is nothing less than irresponsibility. But, Doris... Oh, hello. We was looking for the headmaster, but the shrapnel man gave us this. <laughs> Regrettably, the headmaster is not available, but any other member of the staff will be pleased to help... Typical. Mm. We come to pick up our boy for an interview at a quarter past three. Yes, our Philip. Philip Larch, 4C. 4C? Well, I'm sure Mr Brown will be glad to help you. Ah. Here, you sure you're a teacher? Leonard, oh, he means as how you're somewhat more refined than the usual. Uh, not quite so Welsh as the other bloke. No, you can't. <laughs> If you just tell us where Philip is, we'll be off. Ah, and uh, listen, my name's David, Mrs. Larch. Uh, may I call you Alice? Oh, yes, David. <laughs> We're off to the interview. Lenadier is endeavouring to place Philip at the place where at he works at. <laughs> the wearings, the big ones. Oh, that'll be for a motor mechanic's job. Yeah, full apprenticeship, mate, that's all. Ah. You know, I'm not sure it's always the best thing for a son to follow in his father's foot tracks. I mean, Leonard, what was your father? Motor mechanic, wearing oh. The big one. Really? <laughs> All our family are very handy. Yeah. Carry on, I'll just fix this desk. Ah. You know, I would have thought photography was more his uh, forte. If that means sticking pictures all over the walls, you're damn right. Hmm. Leonard, get on with your desk. Well, <laughs> anyway, where is he? Ah, Philip, yes, a very artistic boy. Mm. I wonder where he gets it from, Alice. Oh, I'm sure I don't know, David. <laughs> Though I do have a tendency to dabble in the waters. Yeah. Well, I think you'll uh, both agree it's very early days. Why don't we just let Philip pursue his hobby and see if anything uh, develops? Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha! Oh, highly funny. But I'm not having my son a fairy photographer. Now, can we have him? We've got a bus to catch. Ah, yes, Philip. Well, I'm afraid at the moment, you see, he's, um, he's in an art class, um, modelling, yes? And um, he can't move because it's still life. But it's Monday. He hasn't changed his undies. That, well, I'll, I'll tell you, what. you go ahead. I'll follow in the car with Philip and maybe um, sit in on the interview. Why? Leonard. Well, what can he say that's going to help him? That's a very gracious offer, David. Thank you. Ah, till uh, 3.15, then? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Thank you very much for mending my desk, Leonard. Alice? Oh, it's such a comfort to know that our Philip has such nice teacher. Uh, Leonard, come on, Alice. Hey, hey, just for the world, and then we are at home. Just for the Oh, you should have come down the brewery with us, boy. Oh. <laughs> well, Mr. Brown, have you decided what you're going to do? Yes, Doris, I'm going back to the cinema. Aye, and who can blame him? <laughs> Too late now, isn't it? Your Mr. Oity Toity's really put the mockers on it all, isn't he? I'm sure he means well, Leonard. I was quite struck by him. 
You'd be bloody struck by me when he gets here. <laughs> I really am most frightfully sorry about this. Oh, I'm sure you endeavoured to be punctual, David, and it's not unduly late, is it, Leonard? It bloody is. <laughs> we see him to hear, we? Oh, well, I had a spot of car trouble, Leonard. Uh, crawled all the way. I mean, you wouldn't expect that from a 350SL, would you? I'd expect anything from a... a 350SL? Not the one with the limited slip differential and the self-adjusting diaphragm. Limit? Diaphragm clutch. Yes, that's the one. It's part around the corner. I've been dying to have a go at one of them. Don't worry, I'll have it fixed in no time. Oh. No time! <laughs> oh, Leonard. Oh, he never lets off. <laughs> he had the bonnet of the earth up at Auntie Lily's funeral. <laughs> well, never mind, Alice. Um, I'm really very grateful. I'll tell you what, while he's there, why don't we nip into the office and get something together? Oh, uh, well, let's just go, eh? Let me see the interview. What? Well, it does seem as though Lady Fortune has endeavoured to stick her oar in. <laughs> and, uh, perhaps it is a little premature to think of placing our Philip in an ill-fitting position. Yeah, well, that's what I've been saying all along, isn't it? Is it, now? Of course, it was Leonard, really. Well, uh, wants his son to follow in his tyre tracks. Oh, David, I don't know where you find it all from. <laughs> but perhaps you and me could endeavour to win Leonard round a bit. Oh, Leonard, dearest, David is endeavouring to remove the mockers from Philip. <laughs> yeah, my no need have his say. I don't know why you have to go creeping to teachers in the first place. Oh, don't you start. I had to talk to someone and you wouldn't listen. I don't want to be a mechanic. And even if I did, I want to be better at it than you are. So I'm going to be a photographer instead. See? Oh, well, he could be right. You did hear what he said, didn't you? You ain't got oil in your ears again. <laughs> no, no, it's as you said. Early days and that. Well, um, that seems to be that. I'll be off. Um, oh, Leonard, I assume the car's OK. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It was the uh, fuel injection system. Computerised, isn't it? Yes, unusual, eh? Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, I've uh, never actually dealt with one of them before. <laughs> oh, Leonard. I bring you tidings of great joy. That bottom-pinching anaesthetist has gassed himself. I said joy, not ecstasy. <laughs> no, I'm starting a new nurse on your ward today, young Maureen Bullock. Good. A very promising cadet. Oh, for God's sake, don't call her that. She's a trainee nurse now, which in her eyes is like being elevated to the peerage. Oh, I see. I'm glad I've got her, though. Bright kid. Bright, yes. But a little exhausting sometimes. I'm here, Matron. Just a minute, nurse. Nurse! <laughs> Staff do try to get back some bottoms done before Mrs. Travelling <clears throat> Library comes. You know how easily shocked she is. Yes, Matron. Oh, please, Matron, I'm reporting. You mustn't make it sound like the second coming. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to start healing the sick. <laughs> well, then, you could make Mrs. Right, of course. Now, now, Mrs. Talbot. <laughs> Oh, well, come along, Mrs. Talbot. Exercise, that's the way. I know it's a strain, but we must persevere, mustn't we? That's right. And round we go. <laughs> Nurse Bullock, Mrs. Talbot is not in training for the next Olympics. No need to rush, Mrs. Talbot. You're not in training for the next Olympics. There you are. What shall I do now, stuff? What I wanted you to do in the first place. Yes, right. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Just make Mrs. Greer more comfortable. And remember your training. Sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how are we today, Mrs. Greer? What is it? What's gone wrong? Nothing to worry you. Something wrong. I know it. A slight abnormality, Mrs. Greer, and that's all I'm at liberty to divulge. Oh, God, I'm abnormal! <laughs> hey, Pat! Oh, I'm going to relapse! No. I'm going to die! No. I won't love it! Really now, Mrs. Greer, what's all this about? It's her. She says I'm abnormal. <laughs> Slightly, I said. Well, I could die of that. I want my bird! You will have your bird 
Grant, when he comes to take you home later this morning. Oh, you're the one that's abnormal, telling people they're abnormal. <laughs> it's only abnormal, Mrs. Greer. If you say abnormal to somebody, then they take it abnormally. Not when the person that says abnormal to you is abnormal herself. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Abnormality, Mrs. Greer, is. <coughs> You must never, ever get involved in that sort of discussion with a patient. I'm sorry, Matron. I'm just a total failure, aren't I? After five minutes, hardly. All you have to remember, Maureen, is that a hospital is a place of rest. Yes, Matron. Will you promise me? Yes, Matron. Very well. A sister has to administer an enema to Mrs. Hopkirk. Would you please prepare the trolley? An enema? Oh, boy! <laughs> That's the one I was telling you about. The one that's abnormal. I'm not abnormal. Now, come on, love, let's get home. I'll cook you a nice dinner, and then we can watch the carnival from the front room window. It goes right past. Lovely. Yeah. One of my friends is in that, Mrs Greer. Oh, when is she abnormal, like you? <laughs> Don't be rude. My friend is a mermaid. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> now, that's what I call real normal, that is. 